Welcome back to round three. You've had uh, enough top-down macro or what? We have a guy I got, a guy in Montana, a guy named Mark. He likes the Raiders. Uh, how you doing? Mark Cahotes. <laughs> that would have been better had they won, but I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing great, Keith. That's always a privilege to speak with you. I think you're great. I think you've made some wonderful calls. People love you because you've made them money. People hate you because you're jealous and you're my kind of guy and just keep up doing what you're doing because I think you're fantastic. Well, I really I, do. I, I think you're great. I think you help a lot of people out. And it I, just, it needs to be said. Well, thanks for, thanks for saying that. I think that's the first time anybody's ever told me that. So I appreciate that. Well, it's just that, I mean, I, you know, it's, you know, people get down on you. They think you're cocky or arrogant or confident, but this is, this is a hard gig. Yeah. And there's always jealous souls looking to take your head off. And you have to, if you don't have swagger, you might as well not do this. Well, so I give, you, I give you a lot of credit because you're really good at it. And uh, I pay attention to you. And it's an uh, honor to be with you. Well, thank you. I, I, I sincerely appreciate that. Uh, even this morning, I even got called Sunshine by, uh, by a subscriber on Twitter. I'm like, you call me Sunshine? Maybe I'm turning, maybe I'm, uh, turning the tide here. Uh, <laughs> it's not easy being a short seller, Mark. You, you and I uh, have been doing it for a long, long time. I think, I mean, I've been doing it for 23 years. So cumulatively, I think, I guess we've been doing it for half a century. Um, it's not an easy business. Uh, balance sheets, uh, analyzing balance sheets, cash flow statements, frauds, management teams, it's tough, and it's really tough in a bull market. Um, has it gotten easier uh, for people to believe you and or your ideas to work now that we're in a bear market? Yeah, I mean, lately it's, lately it's, been, it's been easy. It's, I'm not going to say it's been too easy, but you're in, a, you're in a world where people do not like hearing the truth. They don't like hearing skeptics. They don't like seeing people who are skeptical do well. Um, there's always so much shoot the messenger. It's, it's ridiculous. But I've stayed sort of steady in approach. I mean, I think the last time you and I talked, I mentioned Lynette, which was an over leveraged generic drug company. The stock was 11 yeah. or it was eight, eight. And I said they have issues and now it's 50 cents. And regardless of what the market did, the thing went from eight to 50 cents. So if you find bad deals or frauds or scams, they should, they should work. I mean, I play to win the game. So whether we're in a bull market or bear market, if I'm short something, I'm not in the relative game. I'm right. in the make money game. I, I, I play to win. And if I'm right, you know, I hope to get paid. And if I'm wrong, I fully expect to lose. But on, you know, on something, a, a pal of mine gave me Carvana this year, and Carvana's basically gone from 300 to 19. And it's, and it's been huge. And you guys had Wayfair, and Wayfair's just been a huge winner. And being right for the right reason matters to me. And you can still make money and be wrong, but, it, but I don't really have respect for that, and it's, and it's not as good. So has it been easier? Yeah, it's been easier. I mean, the Fed... Is, is taking the cost of money up and speculation's getting tamped down. But we haven't gotten rid of these idiots in the market who think, you know, they, they hope the world comes to an end so we can get a pivot. And I think that's very dangerous in thought. And well, can, cycles, can need, can you, cycles need to, go ahead. No, sir, sure. I was just gonna get you to expand on that. Like, that is the thought. You know, that is the only remaining thought of a noob or somebody, and I'm not trying to talk down to new players in the game. If you spell it, I think if you spell it for all those people who are so sensitive out there, N-U-E-B, you're complimenting them, and if you say N-O-O-B, you're insulting them. <laughs> Regardless, if you're a rookie, you're a rookie. You have to learn you know, the game by playing it. So um, can you take that last part that you said, because that is the prevailing, you know, just happened again today. Interest rates go down by like you know, five basis points intraday, and it's like, let's buy the profitless Goldman tech basket. Here's what I think people need to understand. I mean, I'm 62 and I've been doing this like way too long, but I think I'm, I'm decent at this over, over time because I've seen a lot of stuff. What people have missed, and they've missed it big, and if you pick up nothing from this other than the names I like and a, and a name I hate, is that the cycles need to work. The, the free markets need to work, and, and the government has turned this market into a zombie. 
And what I mean by zombies is Wayfair should no longer be in business. Bed Bath & Beyond should no longer be in business. Companies that are over leveraged that lose money should go out of business. And when they go out of business, legitimate companies who do things the right way succeed. It's known as a business cycle. And the government has not allowed business cycles to work. We've become a country and a nation of bailouts, of free lunches, of free money, of no matter how bad things are, the government will have your back. The Bernanke put whatever bullshit narrative there is out there. And it's caused these excesses. It's caused huge problems in the system. So the government needs to allow bad to fail. When, when you do something wrong, you should fail. If I do something wrong, the government will not bail me out. If you do something wrong, the government won't, will not bail you out. But when things get bad, let businesses go out of business. Let the cycle work. Let people understand that balance sheet risk is a factor. Yeah. And this constant hoping for a Fed pivot you know, every other week or, or the talking heads on the Cartoon Network that some call CNBC, and it's just a cartoon of, of a thing, they've cost people hundreds of billions of dollars listening to the fools they have on there. And I used to say people spend more time researching where they want to go for dinner than they do of the names they own <laughs> because they listen to these clowns on Cartoon and just buy or sell what they want. And, and, you know, it happened with crypto, happened with meme, happens with crazy names. And they build these clowns, you know, like the tiger cubs, you know, all, all those jokers. They build those guys into heroes when, in fact, all they are are just over leveraged bull market players. They're, they're not smart. They're not good. They're not good at anything they do. They're good at extracting huge amounts of leverage in a bull market and making two and 20. And when they amass billions of dollars, they don't give a rat's ass what they do to their partners. And when things go down, it's just too bad. They fold like Melvin and, and go back in the woods. So I hate the environment. I hate what it's turned into. I hate that cycles have not been allowed to go on. And hopefully, you know, Powell just sees it all through. I mean, yeah. inflation, in, inflation, not in, in prices per se of things, but inflation is out of control from a labor and trying to hire someone or how people raise prices. And it's gonna take a long time to tamp that shit back down. Even in Montana, you can't find people to do an honest day's work for, for real money because people are used to just jacking the shit out of price. People, people don't wanna work and they don't wanna work for an honest day's wage for an honest job. So, and I'm an old timer. I think that has to change, but we'll see. We'll yeah. see. We'll see. Hey there, Hedgeye Nation. Or if you're not part of Hedgeye Nation, thanks for watching Hedgeye on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the button below there. Subscribe to our YouTube page. You can also follow the link in the description to our website to get even more great investing content. It gets, it's, it's almost generational in the sense, this morning I was um, citing, you know, I'm sure you know this book, The Obstacle is the Way. And, um, where Holiday gives this, you know, very basic Zen analog to um, to a society that, that that becomes essentially, and and I'll just quote it. I mean, he said, like, look, you know, the the the, the king decides to put a rock in front of the main entryway so that nobody can get back into the town because he's determined that it's becoming an, everyone's entitled and everybody's soft. Like nobody can handle. The zombie. Nobody can handle a bankruptcy. Nobody can handle. Everybody's got to win. Um, we actually do have a slide in our slide deck, which you might like, my, uh, uh, Mark. That's called um, on slide 111, guys, where we call it a, a reverse in secular zombification. How's that for a mouthful? Um, but you know that cycle, Mark, is is what you said. You now that's gravity. That's the cycle, and we're in it. You know, there's no real you know Fed pivot that can solve for that. Uh, what is interesting? you know, relative to everything that you just said, a lot of, there, there are a lot of interesting things that you said. Um, to me is that you actually, in preparing for this, gave us more longs than you have shorts. So let's get into yeah. it. <laughs> I think that's a first. Well, and well, a lot of prices have gone down, so maybe that's the point. Well, I, 
try to view myself as an investor and I can do longs and I can do shorts, but, but I, I have respect for the cycle and I have respect for the zombification and something that I like, and I like a lot and you guys like it a lot is overstock. Mm -hmm. Overstock's a 26, $27 number. They'll do 2 billion in revenue. They have 12 bucks a share in cash and they have no debt and they compete against Wayfair who's over leveraged and who I think is going to go out of business. They compete against Bed Bath, who's over leveraged and is going to go out of business. They compete against a private company called At Home, which was just a LBO, and they're over leveraged, and I think they're going out of business. So cumulatively, those three companies do somewhere between 18 and 20 billion in sales annually. And it's my view that in the next six to 18 months, one or all three of those companies will go out of business or be significantly impaired, mm -hmm. which puts 18 to $20 billion of sales up for grabs. And if Overstock were to grab 10% of that market share in, let's say, the next six to 36 months, they double their revenue at higher margins. Mm -hmm. And I have not, and I talked to Brian about this, McGaw, the retail guy, and I said, I haven't seen a setup like this since Best Buy basically put Circuit City, Newmark and Lewis, Fredder, and Highland Superstores out of business. And I think Overstock has made money throughout this mess. They've generated cash throughout this mess. You may not like the look of their car, but they're going to get to the other side of the Grand Canyon, while the other three who I mentioned are going to go broke. They're just going to go fucking broke. Well, that's and, a, and, on the broke ones. I mean, would you be net short that whole thing? Like, would you have more short exposure to the three that you ha than you have gross I, long OSTK? I've been short Wayfair from from jump, and it's been a great one for me this year. And one of the things I said, and I think this was when Wayfair was in the two hundreds and Overstock was let's say seventy. I said these two are going to cross. These two stocks are going to cross now. Now, one's 27, Overstock, and Wayfair's 31. So I'm four points away from when I <laughs> said this was going to happen, 160 points away. So I've been fine. I've been fine. But there's going to come a point where people are going to realize how fucked up Wayfair really is. And they are fucked up. <laughs> they, have, they have convertible debt that can't be converted. I mean, in terms of $3 billion, And when it gets refinanced, it's probably going to be at 1,200 basis points. And when you have an under-levered cash generator that has cash like Overstock competing against highly levered zombies, I will take that setup any day of the week. And it's going to happen. And it's happening in front of people's eyes. And, and those guys at Overstock run a tight ship, and they're well aware of the dynamic. And the customers of Wayfair, Bed Bath, and At Home know the score. The factors of Wayfair, Bed Bath, and At Home know the score. And if I'm right on this market share thing and Overstock just gets 10%, God forbid they get 20 or 30%. Mm -hmm. I mean, Target's going to gain share. Amazon's going to gain share. The real guys are going to gain share. But Overstock right now in that space, in that vertical, sits at number four. Hmm. They're number four. Wayfair's number two. Bed Bath is number seven. And I think at home is number 12. This is the macro show. This is pregame, okay? We're trying to play the game that's in front of us today. I'm trying to give you all the content so that you can see that there are many tools in the toolbox to play at the highest level. You know, leadership matters at Hedgeye. So again, being transparent, accountable, and trustworthy people. This is a game about playing and weighing probability. It's not about picking stocks. It's about picking the right portfolio. Execute across everything. Don't get distracted by the MSM and the tourists. They're very dangerous. I will grind and execute for you with our people and with you. And, so, I, guess, and I guess they also get, have the, you know, Overstock has the unique discount of having whatever it was, you know, it's hard to, to nail these things down, but at some point it did have some embedded value of crypto. Um, you know, well, how, they, they, they have these Medici assets, one of which is T0. And, and when in this past, I don't know, last year and early this year, I put together the T0 investment by ICE, which happens to own the New York Stock Exchange. So ICE, the owner of the New York Stock Exchange, owns about 20% of T0. Okay. And T0 brought in, you know, my guy, 
who I brought in for them, and he was the number three guy at ICE. And I think as crypto, the fakes go out of business, and they are going to go out of business and fold, I think it opens up a huge gap for T0. So I think T0, I think T0 is worth three times what Overstock's trading for. But let's just call that speculation. The proof will be in the pudding. But, you know, assets will be tokenized going forward. And there will be things that rise out of the ashes. And Overstock owns about 60, 65% of T0. So I own a lot of Overstock. I've owned a lot of Overstock. The short Wayfair has saved my ass, which I'm glad it did. I'm still short Wayfair. I think it's a disaster. So I think these two are going to pass, you know, by Thanksgiving, and yeah. and and we'll see and we'll see what happens. But your guy has done a tremendous job on on Wayfair. He's done, he's done a tremendous job. It's been a it's been a brilliant call. Well, it's, I'm, it's I'm been- sure he's uh, he's in the other room, kind of looking at me, nodding, saying thank you. So I'll. You're, you're complimenting two people at Hedgeye. You're getting yourself into, uh, into dangerous territory here, man. <laughs> well, let, let, me, let, me just, let me just say a little bit. Now, if I have to go over time, I'll go over time. You know, what people, don't, what people truly don't understand is how hard this really is. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a difficult grind. It's a grind for me. It's a grind for you guys. It's a grind for Brian. And when the market was rallying in, I don't know what it was, June or July or whatever it was, he called me up like on a, a Sunday, like a Sunday day or a Saturday afternoon and said, like, what do you make of all this stuff? And I just said, the markets are broken. We know they're broken. And when they take this shit up your ass, you got to figure out what you know and what you want to bow your back into and what you don't know. And the stuff you know, you stick with. And the stuff you don't know, you fold. And he said, what do you think of Wayfair? I said, I think you're dead fucking right on Wayfair. And I think they're going to go fucking broke. I think they're going to go fucking broke. And he stuck to his guns and he was dead ass right. And they did a convert. And that doesn't, that just gives them more debt. But, you know, this, when you go at it, this is a ball and chain business. And and you can't get away from it. And there's no break if you're doing well. And there's no break if you're doing shitty. And if you're doing shitty, you got to work your way out of it. And if you're doing well, you can't get yourself too cocky because, you know, they'll, they'll just try and take your head off. Mm-hmm. So when I, when I compliment people, it's because I have respect for them as a professional because this is fucking hard. And you guys just don't like flip coins. You take it seriously and you try to get to the bottom of it. And it's hard work. It's hard to do. Yeah, it's hard to do. That consistently and get it right and 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 i don't throw around compliments i am not a sugary guy i mean <laughs> you I, think? I, <laughs> no you're definitely no, not I, so, I even so, i actually just got you to smile for a second there <laughs> so so you know i like you guys i like overstock i like something else and then there's a piece of shit out there that i'm just gonna rip to holy fucking hell and i think it's complete garbage along with this ftx so while i'm on the sugary mood i also love something called enovix and that's envx and I think they're going to change the way batteries are, are thought about and considered. Instead of making batteries from lithium and all that, that stuff that hurts the environment or people have to mine and shit like that and they can't get enough of it, their battery is primarily silicon. And, and the thing about Enovex that's really impressive is, A, it's not vapor. They're actually turning these things out. And they said on their last conference call that they were qualified at, at three $200 billion market cap players. Now that's either Facebook, Google, Apple, Samsung, LG, take your pick. But these batteries, which go between 50 and 90% longer than conventional lithium ion and don't catch on fire and can be used for auto, I think this is going to be a huge business. And, and battery, the CEO, a guy named Harold Russ. I used to not like him, even though I own the stock. And I saw him the other day and I said, I've really warmed up on you, Harold. I'm, you've moved way up on my list and I think you've done a great job. <laughs> I said, you've, I've now have you rated neutral. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and he goes, I don't know how to take that. I said, well, it's a huge improvement from what I thought of you. I mean, this guy has it figured out. And he said to me something very important. 
like really important and it resonates. He said, Facebook's glasses product, they're the product that hasn't been introduced, the AR, VR goggles or glasses, that product would not exist if it wasn't for our batteries. Oh, interesting. Hmm. And that's, and so, so it used to be when you and I were younger, the processor was key. Mm -hmm. And then when we got a little older, it was the software was the key. But now the key to everything is going to be the battery to make these new devices work. And if they execute, and I think they will, this thing could, this thing could be something. It could, it could really be something. And, and, you know, the final thing of why I like it is I'm pals with a guy named TJ Rogers and he's like 75 and he's a badass man. He is a bad. <laughs> Does he live in Montana? I mean, is he like, you know, is, no. no, he's, he's from, he's from Wisconsin and he's a, he lives in Silicon Valley and, but he's, he's, he's a tough, tough guy, tough guy. I like tough. And guy. he's a tough guy. So he told me that when he worked at Cypress and he was the founder of Cypress Semiconductor from when he started to when he retired, which was about 70, he made about 50 million bucks. And I hope he's not mad at me if he hears this. He made about 50 million. And I said, that's really good. I mean, that's impressive. But he said from age 70 to where he is now, he's made about 3 billion. And I said, that's, that's a whole lot better. And he, and, and he really made it because he invested $10 million in something called Enphase, oh, okay. which is symbol, which is symbol ENPH. And yep. he invested in it when the stock was a dollar and he brought in his guys and they manufactured things better. And he introduced operational excellence and the stock went from one to 300. And any guy who can turn something around from when the stock goes from one to 300, he's not only my friend, but he's a guy who I pay attention to. Yeah. And he is a, fucking hard ass bad ass man and he told me that if enovix executes you know if they execute and he's the chairman of the board and he owns 20 million shares if they execute he says it's going to be bigger than end phase and that gets my attention and that gets my attention on on battery which everyone can understand which can go in all handheld portable devices and potentially cars which they're working on a jv for I'm, I respect Grand Slam and, and Light Tower Power. And this guy has it. And, and it's an idiosyncratic name in a very fucked up market. Again, if they execute, you're going to be telling your grandkids about it. And if it doesn't, it's a mistake. And I've made plenty of mistakes. And I'll make plenty going forward. But I'm interested in hitting the ball really fucking far. And in my mind, and a Vixen Overstock, you know, for two different reasons, in a fucked up world could really work. It can really work. And if it doesn't work, I'll say there it's a mistake. And I'm sorry I heard of them. But if it does work, I, I think it's life changing wealth. I really do. Well, what you find in um, down cycles, first of all, many great American companies are built in down cycles, in recessions. You know, it's the adversity, or again, it's like using, hate to use a you know, cheesy book line, but the obstacle is the way. That's what provides like the flexibility, the evolution, the rigidity in businesses. And these hard, you know, these, these badass motherfuckers in America are some of the toughest to deal with in the world, these capitalists. I mean, it uh, doesn't take much to, to back into the math. This guy, TJ, owns almost $400 million worth of stock. I think he's got a pretty serious uh, level of conviction here. So um, that's good. And, and I wouldn't say, I mean, I wouldn't say that that's something that you don't want to do. Like you absolutely, in a bear market, entering a bear market throughout a recession, one of the top things you should align yourselves with in addition to actual cash flow is people. And you, get, you bet on people. You don't bet on like storytelling from drawdown Josh Brown. You could do the reverse 300 to one with him. <laughs> Well, the, the, the thing is, I always say, bet the jockey, not the horse. Yeah. And you can look, and you can look at a guy's record. And I respect someone who invested his money in a, in a business and a company whose stock was one and said, I'm here to make this thing right. And he turns it from one to 300. I respect that. I address awesome. that guy 
is sir as or mister. <laughs> and when he looks at me straight in the face and says, is Enovix can be bigger than that? I fucking pay attention and I do the work and I figure out what this can be. Yeah. And I, I, and, like I bust, and I bust and I bust my ass and I do it. And I think, you know, I think battery is going to turn into a big thing. I, 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 re I really do. And uh, again, I'm 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 all in on TJ. And if the guy's wrong, you know, he's going to lose plenty and I'm going to lose plenty. But it wouldn't be the first time. So, <laughs> but I'm, well, he'll, no. I mean, he's got I mean, he if he was worth the 50 million and now he's put 380 million on this one. Uh, yeah, enough said. How about this, um, you know, Helen of Troy short? So there's a there is a name out there, and I haven't talked about it, and I was saving it for this for your gig. Oh, you were so that, short, nobody I'm, knows that until I just said it. No one knows it till you just said it. I Paul, I, I didn't I, I didn't want to like no that's 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 totally fine. We okay. got the grand unveiling. I actually hate this company called Helen of Troy. The symbol is H E L E. I know it well. And it, and it has everything in a company that is going wrong. It has leverage. They are maxed out on their, their debt line, which is variable. So as rates go up, they get rat fucked. They have a horrible balance sheet. Their receivables are high. Their inventory is high. And they sell Me Too products. It's a roll up of consumer brands. Mm -hmm. Let's call it OXO, VIX, as in thermometers, Braun, Hot Tools, Osprey, which is the backpack, Hydro Flask. I mean, how many Hydro Flasks does everyone have? A dozen? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're discounting Yetis at 60% and they have Hydro Flask. And this last conference call they did where they missed numbers and took guidance down was probably one of the worst conference calls I've ever heard. And I've heard some bad ones. I've heard some bad ones. And I urge everyone listening to this, go back and read the Helen of Troy transcript or listen to the conference call, and it's a disaster. They do about $2 billion in revenue, which is going down. They can't make any more acquisitions. And for a roll-up not being able to make an acquisition, it's bad. Goodwill is, is huge. Sales are down. Margins are down. Earnings are down. And they pull this trick. On a gap number, they make about 4 bucks. And the stock is, let's say, 100. And this thing is leveraged to the sky. It's probably leveraged at five spins. And they don't generate cash. They use something called non-gap earnings, which they say are $9. But as you don't make any more acquisitions, you can't really play the non-gap game. So the non-gap number is going to approach the gap number. And I'm not saying the company is going to go out of business, but it is poorly managed. It is poorly run. The people who follow the stock are brain dead. They don't even mention balance sheet in their reports. And if you look at the company's release of their earnings release, I think there's like 20 pages explaining non-GAAP versus GAAP, and they don't come with a 10Q, and they say selected balance sheet items. And when you read the 10Q, <coughs> it literally looks like pig vomit compared to what they put out in their press release. So... I think this thing is, is rotten to the core. They cut the shit out of their numbers. They, they brag that they think best Bed Bath & Beyond's turnaround is okay. But real companies are going to A, destock them, not carry as many brands. Things will become more competitive. And I think the base earnings of this company is somewhere between two and three bucks. Stocks at 100, fully leveraged. I think they have huge problems, and and I'm very familiar with roll-ups. I love being short roll-ups, and the last acquisition is is tends to be fatal. And this thing reminds me more of Sunbeam in a broken garden than it does of anything. And there's nothing they have that anyone needs. And in a tight economy, right? Do you need your third brawn coffee machine? that has insta sleep do you need another do you need your fifth bronze shaver no these things don't wear out and yeah. if you walk into a costco or any place all these oxo products are either 50 percent rebate or heavily discounted so i think this thing is a mess i think it's an absolute mess it's not crowded it trades the short interest is very low no one even knows i'm involved in it but i figured i'd come on on your 
this great conference and at least come with something new. That's a, and I, I just don't, and I and I don't I don't I don't think anyone's going to buy it. I don't think anyone's going to LBO it. He's got debt coming out of the eyes. And and the last time I went for a overly leveraged roll up was this Concordia out of Canada, and that guy went broke. And that was a poor I, that that was a poor man's valiant in generic drugs. So if any of your guys look at at the brands of this company, you'd say there's nothing here other than me too. And why can't this company go out of business? I mean, their their interest expense is going to go through the roof even as rates go up because they're not termed out, and and they're maxed out on the credit line. And in the heyday when the stock was a couple hundred, they were stupid enough to buy back their worthless stock. So yeah. now they can't buy stock. They're up against the wall, and the balance sheet's a mess. So it's it's kind of a this thing is really a balance sheet income statement sort of tutorial. You know, Overstock has a great balance sheet. They compete against awful balance sheet guys. And I and I throw this in the loop of my hedge against Overstock. So I'm short Helena Troy. I'm short Wayfair. I'm short some other stuff that I don't really need to get into. And I and I love Anavix, love Anavix, and I love Overstock. And I think, you know, and we'll see. I mean, we'll see, you know, the next time you have me on how how these things pan out yeah, but i um helen of troy it brings back memories like my as a much younger man my one of my first shorts actually ever was helen of troy uh coming out of the year two th it's the same it's the same garbage brands right and it you can be short this just based on the cycle it just so happens that i don't i don't know if it's the same management team but that stock was the first one of the first stocks that i shorted that got cut in half twice i believe it was in the high teens and end up at like four bucks by the by the time we were actually in a recession. So again, if you own garbage and you're levered and you're entering a recession, I mean, and you have somebody who actually did the work like Cajotes did on Helen of Troy, I certainly haven't this time around, but well, the, you know, the, 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 these are the, the best shorts. The crazy thing is their last acquisition is they bought that Osprey, which is that sort of camping backpack company. And he paid 14 times EBITDA ah. at, the peak, at the peak of the COVID bubble. So he paid 14 times over overly inflated numbers. I mean, Yeti has gone from 100 to 30. And Yeti, at least, is a brand where the thing works. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I bought two Yeti, you know, things like this. You know, for the first time in my life, there was, I saw them at 70% off. So I said, I might as well take the plunge because they were pink. And that happens to be my family color. <laughs> but, but, but Yeti, you know, competes against that Hydro Flask, and I got an Anavix Hydro Flask, and maybe I'll I'll send one to you with an Anavix hat. But, you know, I, I think this is junk. And just, you know, I have this wig indicator that I always short guys who wear a wig in the last guy. Was <laughs> because if you're a, it's true. I, I think I'm. I think I'm. I think I'm 19 out of 20 shorting CEOs who wear a wig. <laughs> Because if you're a CEO who wears a wig, and the Malincroft guy wore a wig, Trudeau, if you wear a wig, you're not comfortable with yourself, and you're trying to be a fake, and you're trying to, at least I got you laughing and crying, that's good. Oh my God. See what happens when, see what happens when you break away from the macro, and I told everyone to get their beauty sleep, because I'm going to come out ripping. If you wear a wig, you're not comfortable with yourself, and you're not comfortable in what you do, and you're kind of a fake. And... The CEO of Helen of Troy, he doesn't wear a wig, awesome. but in the picture of him in the annual report, he wears like these light to dark glasses, and and it just makes him look like just this complete weirdo. And you think someone who's in touch with someone would say, "Take off your fucking glasses for the picture, <laughs> right? You look like a fucking You're wearing shades. <laughs> it's exactly exactly right, and and it's bad enough they're based in El Paso, Texas." Oh, but it's oh just, boy. <laughs> so it's it's sketchy stuff like that, pay, overpaying for Osprey at the top of the market when you're leveraged to the hilt to begin with. When rate, so everything they've done is wrong. They've levered up at the wrong time, made acquisitions at the wrong time, wrong vertical, wrong customer, selling huge to Bed Bath and Beyond, selling to Target just as Target's cutting back all this shit. When every step you make is wrong, and then you sort of falsify your earnings with this non-gap comparison, folks, they only make four bucks. Stock's 100. It's 25 times fully leveraged on a business which is falling apart.
That is tight. I, I love yeah. it. And, and the, the wig indicator, that's so good. You know, the, yeah, the, the wig. That's the, the wig best. indicator. The wig indicator doesn't miss. That okay, is, it's not. It, it's not hair plugs. It's not dyeing your hair. It's wearing a true fucking wig. That, yeah. I mean, they, <laughs> it's it's like an old school wig. I mean, the mimetics guy, and he's in prison. He wears a wig. He couldn't wear a wig in prison. No, 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 no. You don't want to wear the. No, no. You don't want to wear one of the. No, that's not good. But, that's but, not good but, risk management. But, but, but but he wore a wig. So you want to get into this FTX a little bit? Yeah, well, actually, I was going to say that Bankman Freed looks like he's got a wig, but it's, it's his, I think it's his real flow. I, <laughs> um, I, by, I, by the way, you know, Bankman Freed, FTX, I've been teeing Cahotes up on this a little bit on Twitter because he's been doing the work behind the scenes. So, you know, when he goes deep on something, first of all, if he's going deep on you or your company, you better be on the watch. You better take the wig off. And you better definitely, you know, you better be careful. Um, instead of doing, like, if you do have questions, by the way, for the cue for Mark, um, fire them in. But so what the fuck? Like, why is this guy, how does this guy, ex how does he keep doing what he's doing? Well, he's, he's an intriguing character because when you have a big trade, any of your guys have a big trade or I have a big trade or my pal Porter Collins has a big trade or Henry Reardon has a big trade. You know, the details of that trade, right? You, 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 you know, the day you hit it, you know, all the players involved, you know, everything that happened, you, 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 you'll never forget it. I mean, learn out in house B, which is where some people know me was 20 some odd years ago. I can recite the dates, the players, how it happened, everything to this day. When, when anyone tries to pin SBF down on where he made his money, you can't get a cogent answer. And, and in his trade, you needed real money up front in the place on this country crypto arbitrage to make big money. Right. And it's simple things as who financed you, because you clearly didn't have the money. You clearly didn't have the money and you look like such a fucking zombie. No one in their right mind would ever give you the money. So who funded this trade for you? Please explain how the trade worked and his partner, which no one has gotten a straight answer. You've gotten a lot of shine and you've gotten a lot of, of sideways looks, you know, the, 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 the fish eye look, but you can't get a real answer. And his partner, is a guy named Gary Wang and no one can find shit on Gary Wang. And he's on the board of advisors of Sequoia. And I shit you not, you look up Sequoia stuff. There's a picture of Gary Wang with his back of his back facing a computer. There's no picture of Gary Wang. Really? None. Is he, he's, really. a, he's a partner at Sequoia or he's, he's, a... he's a, no, he's not a partner at Sequoia. He's a so-called advisor. Oh. But if SBF is worth $11 billion, allegedly Gary Wang's worth the same amount, and no one can get shit on Gary Wang. You know, I employed a major news organization who was doing a story on him to do the work and to dig in, and they just wouldn't because I don't know how much money FTX spends in financial PR to get the mainstream media off, off the, the path. But he's his, then, he, it, I'm just, go, I mean, level one <laughs> analysis, like his, so Gary Wang is the same CTO or the chief technology officer of FTX? Allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. And, and, but there's a chief regulatory officer of FTX, and his name is Dan Friedberg. And if you Google Dan Friedberg poker scandal, he was the general counsel of, I don't know if it was Ultimate Bets or one of those Me Too sites, where they basically cheated against players. Oh, great. So usually, so usually if you cheat in cards on an online poker thing, you're kind of a marked man. And if you hit up Dan Freeberg's LinkedIn, there's no mention of his time at, a, at the poker site. There's no mention of it. Yet, he's the chief fucking regulatory officer of FTX, which is a big fucking job. Wow. So, so if you're hiding your past and not putting it on LinkedIn – and you have this big job at FTX, either FTX knew they hired 
uh, chief regulatory officer who was part of a chart, a car cheating scandal. Either they knew that or they, or he covered it up and got hired. If he covered it up and they got hired, he should be fired on the spot. And if he then goes and covers up his past, he should be fired on the spot because that's a big fucking job. Wow. And then you take, then you take into account that SBF is bailing out known Ponzi's and frauds in the crypto space. Everyone who's gone bankrupt or is a proven fraud. But he's not buying them out in front of things. He's buying them out behind. He's not buying them out behind and getting senior of things. He's buying them out in front of and getting scammed in these things as well. And if you're a legitimate business guy, why would you throw good money after bad? And why wouldn't you wait till these things blow up? I mean, blow up and go out of business and pick up the pieces. And, and somehow through that, Cartoon Network has painted him as the JP Morgan of crypto, which makes absolutely no sense. He's not the JP Morgan of crypto because he can't sit there, look at you straight in the face and explain anything. He can't explain anything. Then he was in Hong Kong and then somehow moved from Hong Kong to the Bahamas, where in the Bahamas he lives with six other people in a commune or a compound and sleeps on a futon. Now, if I was worth- where, where in, uh, Do you know where his house is in the Bahamas? Do you got logistics on all No, that? I, 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 I do not. I don't wanna be accused of tracking anyone down. I'll have another FBI visit or, or something like that. Yeah. So, but, but nothing of this story fits. And normally in stories, I can get five or six things that fit and move on. But nothing here fits. Everyone, everything reads like this thing is a complete scam. And I have a ton of stuff. And there are some high level people who are really good who are working on this. And we're talking to a very um, hard nosed mainstream media journalist about exposing this entire thing, this entire creation, if you will. And I think this thing is dirty and rotten to the core. Hmm. When and you say uh, to the core, um, in the, well, <laughs> I was gonna use the words criminal and political at the same time, but you know, and cause they're ostensibly intertwined, but would the political side of this or those supporting him politically and financially uh, be, uh, willfully blind, um, you know, claim the fifth. Well, he's, he's the number two donor to the Democratic Party. SBF is. Yeah, that part and, I do. What, and the part of that I don't understand is this is a 30 year old guy living in the, Baham living in the Bahamas, primarily operating offshore. Hmm. Why? Why? What's your cause? Is your cause childhood cancer? Is your cause world hunger? What's your cause? Because if your cause is to build pipes between the United States and, and the financial system here and third world money laundering companies like China or places in Asia, that has a very bad ring to it. Because there are a lot of ways and I could see a lot of reasons to donate politically, but this makes no sense. And when you add that to most people who turn into something, they have a mentor, right? The Tiger Cubs, <coughs> like Julian Robertson. Julian Robertson was a friend. I will miss Julian Robertson. He was funnier than hell. He was really good. And he'd roll over in his grave knowing what the Chase Coleman's have done, right? But at least those people were trained by someone good. Mm -hmm. Michael Steinhardt trained a lot of people, a lot of people who worked for Steinhardt, Drucken Miller had Soros. You know, I've helped some people along the way, but people have mentors in this business. Who the fuck has mentored SBF? Where did he come from? He was a washout from Jane Street where he was nothing more than an intern where he lasted 18 months. Who taught this guy anything? Who taught this guy the ropes? If you're FTX and you're an exchange, who at that company has exchange experience? 
I mean, ICE that runs the New York Stock Exchange, that's a real outfit. Those guys are motherfuckers. They're hard-nosed businessmen. David Goon, who runs T-Zero, he's a 60-year-old guy who's been doing this for, th for 30 years. He left a job that paid him $5 million a year for ICE to go work at T-Zero for equity, right? Yeah. To change the way tokens are done. So if someone goes to me and says, who's behind T-Zero? I'll say David Goon. He was the head of strategy for ICE for 30 fucking years. And he walks from $5 million a year annually, guaranteed, to go run T-Zero. Now I say, who the fuck runs FTX? You got a guy who has a mop for a head of hair, who sleeps on a futon in the Bahamas, who goes from <laughs> Hong Kong, who goes from Hong Kong to there, whose chief regulatory officer has his hands all over a poker cheating scandal that's not on his LinkedIn. I was just looking right? at as you're talking, I'm doing like a very basic, you know, screen. His LinkedIn doesn't go past like he's got a huge gap in there. Ex uh, ex ex Friedberg, exactly. Dan Friedberg, right? And then ex ex exactly. So 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 when you take this to let's say a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, and, you, and, and I'm just putting out about 3% of what I have here, and yep. you give it to someone real and say, this can be a bigger scandal slash scam than Enron, right? And here we go. And, and, and I've gone to Raul Paul, I've gone to all the crypto guys who know this guy in an interview. And I said, all I want just give me 30 minutes of his time. Give me 30 minutes of his time. You can tape it, record it, do whatever you want. I just want him and Wang. Him, Wang, and Freebird. Just give me 30 minutes with him and, and win or take all. And yeah, if these I, guys... I, I, bet you, I'll, I bet you Raul Paul will get right on that for you. Um, no. No. But, but they're, I, all paid, if, they're all paying each other. But, the whole but thing. What, but whatever it is, we're talking about real money here. Yeah, we're, 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 uh, we're, 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 ta we're talking about real stuff in crypto and, and the optics of crypto. I think anyone would say, even if you're a crypto bull right now, are really bad. Rates are up. Crypto's down. Usage is down. Trading is down. Everything's down. So where the fuck does FTX make its money? Where do they make their money? This How do a, they? Make it's a crazy thing. Like, um, you know, as, as uh, I'm my friend Jim Chanos would say there's legal fraud and then once people start to lose a lot of money it gets prosecuted he has a he's got great um, uh, uh, class at Yale that he teaches on that um, the back at one other point I just want to circle back to one other point because I was looking it up while you were speaking as well you said you know who brought this guy along you know right so and but so his father correct me if I'm wrong his name is Joseph Bankman he's faculty at Stanford Law School that's right is that right that's yeah, and his, mom, and his mom's at Stanford, too. But that has nothing to do with capital markets. That has nothing to do with exchange trade. No, but right? if, I mean, if your dad, if it's one thing, like I've had issues with uh, nefarious people behaving certain ways. And I can go back and I could say, well, you know, like you, you do sometimes find a lot in somebody's history, particularly in terms of who raised them, their moral compass, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, if, if your father... Is Stanford faculty law over here, and you're doing that over there. Now that's something, right? That's 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 um, that's quite the juxtaposition. Well, I don't need to get sued again. I mean, I'm doing I'm doing pretty good. I'm actually suing a couple people. And <laughs> I'm I've, doing pretty good. <laughs> and, 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 what do you and like the ACLU? <laughs> well, you know, what do we sue my, now? My, well, my medics, for example. Well, I'm suing the FBI and the DOJ on a FOIA basis to find out why they sent people to my house and tell me to shut up. So, but on my medics where the CEO went to prison, he used to brag that he had a former SEC commissioner on the board. Right. And his, and his right-hand man who created the problems with me and the FBI was the late Senator Isaacson, who was on the head of the Senate Ethics Committee. So if you're the Senator heading the Ethics Committee, and you're taking a bribe from a guy who's now in jail, who's now in prison for leaning down on me, there's nothing that you can pull over me or surprise me on how fucked up things are. So I don't give a fuck who his dad is or where he works. 
I, 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 it, it what... just it just it just doesn't matter. I mean, I know psychiatrist kids who are the most mentally fucked up people you've ever want to know. Right. I mean, nothing has anything to do with anything if you want to bend, twist and do things like that. And I would argue the fact that his his dad's involved in law or teaching at Stanford Law, I think, is more ground cover for what I really think is going on. here. That's really interesting. I mean, what do you think just generally uh, this is you know, tangentially and related, but, you know, in bubbles, you know, people get away with a lot of shit. Right. Um, yeah. You know, they get away with fraud. That's the whole point. They manipulate and steal and cheat and rob the system and and, pun and in the end, it's the people that get hurt until they get caught. Then they get hurt. But how do you like somebody like Elon Musk and somebody like you know, just the fact that the guy is known as SBF? I mean, it sounds like he's the crown prince of Sa Saudi Arabia, for God's sakes. I mean, his name is Sam Bankman Freed. His name is Elon Musk. I mean, the behavior above the law, I mean, is, you know, to me, it's like part of these concentric circles that are the mother of all bubbles. Uh, any, any thoughts on that broadly? Is this, is this just what you get when you're coming out of that's, the mother of all bubbles? That's, that's, a good, that's a good question and a really good point. So I've never been short Tesla and I've never been short Musk because he's, he, in my mind, is protected. He's protected by the government. He's, you know, no one touches him. And when people say the guy lands rockets, fine. But I'll, I'll, I'll pick on guys like Helen of Troy and uh, right. Sunglass wearing CEO there. I mean, I'll pick on, on bumblers and, and imbeciles. The thing about SBF is what, is F, what has SBF done? He hasn't done shit in his life. And he can't explain what he's done. And he puts up billboards of himself. I can understand how E-Trade puts up billboards. I can understand how J.P. Morgan puts up billboards. I can understand how Hedgeye puts up billboards. But I haven't seen or walked by in an area in Boston of seeing the Keith McCullough billboard that has nothing, <laughs> that has nothing to do with Hedgeye. And people would really it's, like me. <laughs> right, right, no, it has nothing to do with Hedgeye. And it's almost like I have this other thing. I'm, I'll just give it away. They want people to focus their eyes on the shiny object. They want people to focus their eyes on this weirdo. They want people to focus on this Asperger's guy, right? And not look at what's really going on, whether it's money laundering or crime or covering shit up or what's really going on behind the scenes. They want you to focus on this weirdo who sleeps on the beach in a commune, all shucksy, has CNBC down and, and not look at the reality of it. And in most things I've ever looked at that are complete scams, again, I can find fits like their drugs work or this, this guy's a real guy mm -hmm. or I know so-and-so and it's a real firm. <clears throat> Nothing at FTX fits, nothing. Wow. And, and, I, and I'd love to know how exactly they make their money. Do they make their money by running in front of their customers? Do they make their money, you know, how exactly do they make their money? How did SBF make their money? Who funded SBF? Where is Gary Wang? Is Gary Wang with the CCP? Is, he, is, is the CCP involved in, in FTX? I mean, these are questions that should be known. And, and when you're donating, such vast amounts to the Democratic Party, what exactly is your mission? And on one hand, you have this weirdo SBF on the left-hand side appealing all these crypto freaks. And on the other side, you have Tom Brady and Giselle and Steph Curry doing their ads and sponsoring the Miami basketball arena and being a patch on Major League umpire shirts. And, and I can't understand any of it. And I'm not a Harvard guy and I'm not a Yale guy and my grades were shitty and I worked my ass off. And, and I think I see things that others don't see because usually when they don't make sense or you can't explain it to a 10th grader in a paragraph or less, something tends to be wrong or you shouldn't be in it. Right. Why is Overstock going to win? I can go to a 10th grader and say they have three competitors who do 20 billion dollars of sales. 
I think they're going to be out of business in six to 36 months. I think Overstock could double or triple their business. And if they do that, they're going to be a, it's going to be a big stock, young man. It's going to be a big stock. I think Enovix is going to change the way batteries are done in portable devices. They're going to do away with lithium. They last longer. They're made in the United States. They, they provide Facebook the ability to come with goggles and things like that. You may like or not like the story, but, I, but it makes sense. No one can fucking explain FTX to me. No one can explain where SBF came from. No one can explain who mentored SBF. No one can explain, you know, he met his partner at a summer math camp in Canada. Well, if you meet your partner when you're 10 or 12. Is that true? That's is that it's like band camp? <laughs> what the hell? Story. No, that's their story. That, that Wang and SBF met at math camp in Canada. And I know you're from Thunder Bay. They met at a math camp in Canada when they were younger. Then somehow migrated to MIT together. And Wang, right? Wang, no matter what you are, who the fuck takes a picture of yourself of your back looking at a fucking computer and prints it? Who the fuck it? Who the fuck are you? Right? You just say no picture or Gary Wang. And and then the other thing is produce yourself. I have questions, right? I'm a simple guy, right? My grades were never good. I have questions for you, NB MIT brain surgeons. Very simple questions. And let's air it and let's make it pay-per-view. And, and whatever I get, I'll give it to a cause. We'll give it to St. Jude's Kids or Hurricane Relief or what have you. But it's important to get to the bottom of this bullshit to see what goes on. Well, they and, have an open invitation to be here. I'll, I'll just like actually, you know, we'll create the perfect... Uh open and transparent, accountable, real conversation, just like we always host here. And you know, it's, it's and, an open, it's for, and, and I'm sure they're watching. I mean, if they're, if they're this and, in it, you know, they're, they're watching, somebody's watching, somebody's telling them, can you believe Cojotes is saying this? Well, just, well, if not, it's not true, not, just not, come on, come on and explain not, it. Cause not, Ralph not, Paul's well, not going to host it. I mean, Freeberg is Freeberg. You know, you know, my lawyer says you have to own the label, you know, whatever your label is, I own it, right? And I got lovers and I got haters. No problem. I get it. I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea. But Freeberg is what he is. And you and he was responsible and at that poker cheating scandal outfit. And he was the general counsel there or some higher up. And he's a lawyer. But to be head of regulatory at FTX and have this in your past and cover it up and not address it, I mean, would you guys as a chief regulatory officer, have a poker cheater or a guy involved in a poker cheating thing on, on your outfit? I don't think so. No. And, and I was short it, world poker tour at one point. But. Well, I mean, what it, whatever it is, whatever it is, it is. And if I have it wrong, I'm the first to admit I have it wrong. But I don't like it. And I don't like the looks of it. And the problem is, if this thing goes bad, if it goes bad, it's going to blow a hole into something and the people who bail it out are going to be the fucking taxpayers or, or how did this happen? Or how did the lady from Theranos happen? I mean, SBF's parents were uh, Harvard faculty. Well, my daughter or Stanford faculty. Well, my daughter went to Stanford. Stanford's not without its, its glitches. They got, they have problems, but look at the board of directors of Theranos. You have the best and the fucking brightest there. And, 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 and they got bamboozled by the thing. So I just have simple questions. I'm a simple guy. I'm a skeptical guy. None of this fits. And I hate when people make, you know, these poster, poster boys out of these nothings who can't even explain what they've done. I don't like the steroid era in baseball. I don't like guys who cheat. I don't like guys who cheat in gambling because it, it diminishes the work that real guys do. It diminishes the efforts that you guys that take. You know, you're sitting there working your ass off. And if guys the fly by nights come by and do these crypto scams, you know, it just it just it just darkens everyone's door. So well, I mean I, I I I and I'm sure many, not all, you know, not in this environment, not and 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 again the obstacle is the way on that front. I mean, not all people are going to want to find the truth here. And if, if there is a simple truth that refutes any or, or, or some of what Mark just said, then 
appear and discuss it. It's, it's not that complicated. What is complicated is untying these webs, these self-interests, these lies, these cheats. Again, there's a reason why when you walk into the, to, to, you, go, you can go to West Point. There's a big plaque, you know, I shall not lie, steal, or cheat, or lie, steal, lie, <laughs> lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. I mean, that's that's what you're you're saying here, and it's not it's 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 not it shouldn't be unnatural for people to hear uh, this kind of um, this kind of investigative search uh, or this questioning. Absolutely not. You should you, you should be proud of that, and and hopefully we get to the to the right answer because there are a lot of people in this world that are on you know the suicide watch. Uh, for crypto, a lot of people yeah. have lost, uh, you know, their entire net, whatever they had. The, the 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 thing about that bubble was, of course, that it drew in people that had absolutely nothing to begin with, and they thought, okay, look, if the thing trades at a penny, it can go to ten pennies. You know, if it it, it was a much more expensive lesson than a lottery ticket. You know, so there's a lot going on there. You know, we're about to enter the regulatory storm of that. I hope. And hopefully your questions get answered. I mean, they, they, they better. This is America. Well, if, if, if nothing else, it's the starting point of a discussion. So, 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 you know, it's kind of like, let's have an adult discussion on adult topics and get to the bottom of the whole thing. Yep. And, and, and Freeberg should at least have on his LinkedIn what he was involved in, or he should be removed from his job. And, and, and SBF be held accountable on how did this happen? And, and, and even if, I mean, there's guys pulling records on this thing. There's guys pulling um, bank things. There's guys pulling corporate records. If you go and really track down the employees of some of these FTX outfits, they're, in their past, they're nothing but glorified interns. None of these people could run a lemonade stand, let alone an exchange. Wow. So I think... So I think I'm I think I'm on to something. I think it's a discussion. I think the mainstream media wants to look the other way. Cartoon Network loves this shucksy shit. And, um, you know, and it's and it's again, I'm, I'm just being me. And when something's on my mind, you know, I appreciate having me on and every now and then and giving my views and, you know, and hold me accountable to what I say. Well, we and the entire Hedge Eye Nation community, the, your community, everyone, in America should really, and the world should be listening to this. Uh, this is obviously um, you know, extending itself to a very broad discussion, a big topic that people need to know uh, more about. So thanks, thanks for your time today, man. We appreciate it. And the ideas. Uh, yeah, certainly. Well, the ideas, I mean, I eat my cooking. I own a lot and I'm short plenty of this stuff. So we'll see how it all works. But I really appreciate you having me and I really appreciate the job you do. You do a great job and it sort of needs to be said because uh, you have you have enough detractors out there who are jealous of what you've done and and i have great respect for you and again i'm not sugary so thanks well, thanks i, I thanks appreciate for that beauty. It. you look I, you look good you got your beauty sleep last night so <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> thank thanks a bunch man we we appreciate your time he's uh mark cojotes i mean how good is that i'm all sugary you know i'm i'm like a candy cane sunshine you know uh, that obviously uh, joking on that front and to bring it back and make it quite serious, you know, what we're trying to do and what we've been trying to do for 15 years at Hedgeye is reveal the truth. OK, we may not always be right on the path that we're taking to find the truth, but it's incumbent upon us to ask the questions, not have any political bias, not have, have any conflict of interest, any kind of fee, commission, whatever. Again, we're not always going to find the truth. But we're here, transparent, accountable, and trustworthy in asking the questions that might get us closer. So thank you uh, to everyone that was uh, a guest here today uh, for the Real Conversations, and we'll see you for day two tomorrow. Hey there, Hedge Eye Nation, or if you're not part of Hedge Eye Nation, thanks for watching Hedge Eye on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the button below there. Subscribe to our YouTube page. You can also follow the link in the description to our website to get even more great investing content.